themselves throughout the pandemic. So <laughs> you'll have to cut that out. Okay. Welcome one and all to Friday's Art Talk. I'm Victor, your host. And today we'll be meeting another set of artists from the East Bay who will be talking about their work, but mostly how they carried themselves through, through this tough period of the pandemic. And so be prepared for amazing insights into artists' lives and also great artwork, which is featured in the 2021 um, East Bay Artists Art Book. So that's available, if I'm not mistaken, on the FridayArtWalk.com website. Before we get into it, we first want to give uh, pay our dues, thank our sponsors, those who carried us through the pandemic and made this possible in a lot of ways by showing their faith in the arts, but also just giving at a time when everybody was struggling. What a precious gift. So firstly, we'd like to thank the Flex Art and Design for their wonderful donation of um, gift cards to the artists um, which is such a beautiful gift. We truly, truly appreciate your support. The gesture and the actual financial reward to it. So Flex Art and Design, thank you very much for that. Secondly, we'd like to thank uh, Alameda Municipal Power for backing us up and supporting us through this venture. It's always tricky starting off a new adventure and you stepped in right at the beginning showing that you have trust and faith in the artists in the East Bay, we thank you. That being said, we I would like to say all this information will be available on FridayArtWalk.com. That's FridayArtWalk.com, um, along with the artist profiles and recordings of these art uh, these art panels. Please do check it out. Send it out to family and friends. Great insights in those videos, as you will see tonight also. So. Uh, at this juncture, I would like to introduce our artists. And today we have two fantastic artists from the Bay Area and they are Nock and Julia. So if we can get right into it, we'll start with um, Nock, who will start with you and we'll open it up and say, tell us a bit about yourself and where you're from. Um, hello everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm very excited to be here and um... Uh, to have this opportunity to talk about my artwork. Um, yeah, to start, um, a little bit about myself. Um, I grew up in Oakland, but um, I'm an immigrant, uh, a refugee from Vietnam. And I'm the first one in my family to be able to have a formal education and go to college. And I went to UC Santa Cruz, and that's where I got my BA in, uh, in art. And there in Santa Cruz, I studied, um, I, I majored, uh, well, I, I focused mostly in painting and drawing. Um, but to be honest, uh, you know, that saying that people always say that uh, education is wasted on the youth. And definitely it was wasted on me because as a student, I, I just had no focus and um, I had no direction and I just did enough to pass. And uh, now as an adult, uh, I'm, I'm just beginning to dive back into art and developing myself as an artist. Um, and professionally, I'm a hairdresser now. Uh, and you know that, that training for me, uh, that art training for me really helps uh, in my professional career because that uh, hand-eye coordination is there now, the color theory is there. Um, how I view proportions and uh, have developed my aesthetic, uh, it, it all came back from my years and uh, days at uh, art school. Awesome, thank you so much. Well, we look forward to hearing about your journey um, and where you are now within the art. Thanks so much now. And on to you, Julia, same question. Um, tell us a bit about yourself and um, where you're from. Um, I was born and raised in San Francisco, California. Uh, my parents immigrated from, my mom came from Japan and my father came from the Philippines. Um, I grew up in public housing in Chinatown and spent a lot of time, you know, running around, basically running around North Beach in Chinatown. Um, 
I guess you call it a latchkey kid. So my mom would be out working and I would be out just gallivanting around. Um, it was, uh, I would say, you know, um, there was some drawbacks to that and but uh, I felt like I really got to know my neighbors. I got to know um, uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti. I would hang out at the City Lights bookstore. Um, spent a lot of time there. Uh, you know, it, the neighborhood basically raised me, took care of me. Um, I have siblings and uh, my older brother wasn't as adventurous. He would stay home, but me and my sister, we were out running around. Uh, um, I went to, uh, actually, I had been a hairdresser for 20 years before I went back to school and I, I earned a BFA from uh, California College of the Arts. Um, I got my degree in industrial design and uh, prior to that, as a hairdresser, I was also a visual artist. Um, I did uh, printmaking, I did uh, 3D art, sculptural um, painting, um, but then when I went back to school, I decided that I would uh, study design. Uh, at that point, Uh, uh, Daniel, we lost you, just so you know, we lost like five seconds there. We, we okay. lost you at, at that point. Okay. At which point? <laughs> when you said at that point. Okay. So, I'm sorry. I, I don't know where I was. So, um, I was... Uh, I had gone back to school later in life. I was in my thirties when I went back to school. So it was much later. Um, so education was not wasted on me. I took it very seriously. Um, and I tried to learn as much as I could. Um, the materials were kind of hard for me to come to, to, to get uh, because, you know, going back to school and uh, trying to survive in San Francisco, uh, you know, I didn't earn that much money. Uh, so my materials basically came from dumpsters. Um, so the kind of art that I would create were uh, found objects. Um, the kinds of things that interest me were things that had history, um, things that had a prior life. And then I would um, find a way to breathe in new life to it. Um, and I think that kind of reflects in uh, my paintings now. Um, so, yeah, that's basically who I am, where I came from. I love it. Um, so just so you know, for the audience, this was not deliberate that we have two hairdressers in the room. This is purely <laughs> coincidence. And what a lovely coincidence that you entered the same profession through different doors. So I'm really excited to see how your journeys led you there. And with that being said, we're gonna go straight into the artwork now, the reason why, part of the reason why we're here. So if I could ask our wonderful technicians to pull up um, Steve um, Nock's piece and we'll hear about that. While they do that, Nock, um, how, did, how do you, if you remember, how, how did it feel being um, in art school? Did you feel, like you belonged there or, or wh why were you there? That's a question you can answer later, but we can, we can get into the piece first and then we can go to that question. Tell us, what yeah. inspired the piece? Well, thank you. Um, this piece is, um, is of my, my dog who um, passed away of, uh, as of last year. His name is Stanley. And so the piece is called Stan. And this is just a, a piece, um, it's a memory of him. And it just greatly show his character. And, uh, you know, he, he just loved basking in the sun. And uh, for those who have uh, pets, uh, you know that when they're most comfortable, they're just belly up and that's, that's one of their most vulnerable position. 
And with this piece, I, I just really want to focus on the detail and uh, the, the, the mark making of the fur. Um, you know, sometimes it, it can be very tedious and, and, uh, and for me, it's very meditative. Uh, and you know you can really get obsessive about these marks, um, so that's what I wanted to uh, portray in this piece: uh, just the detail and 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 the mood that that I got from him. And it was more of a uh, a challenge for me to to render this and uh, to serve as a memory of of this this lovely little guy. Wow. So is this um, attention to detail something that runs through through your work? Or is this for this particular piece that you got so detailed? You know, that's that's exactly right, uh, Victor. Um, I think the consistency in all of my work is I, I can get a little uh, obsessive about details. And one of the, uh, the feedback that my husband uh, have said to me is, you know, I, I, I just get into the zone where I, I can just sit for eight hours working on like a, a little paw or uh, the face. And for me, like it, it might've been eight hours, but it, it feels like 10 minutes to me, you know? And I know that um, that's when I'm in my zone when like time just doesn't matter anymore. Um, and you know, to, just to answer your previous question a lot, a little bit uh, in art school, I, I felt like I belong. Uh, you know, being being a a child of an immigrant, uh, art uh, is kind of a luxury uh, because um, art. You know, uh, my my parents didn't know that you can make money from art, uh, or that you can be happy from doing art. And so in my family, when I, I told them that I wanted to major in art, uh, that was just like, why would you do that? <laughs> like, you won't make any money. Um, why? Yeah, so. Hmm. That's really interesting. If you'll allow me, if you'll allow me to get a little personal here, um, it, it looks like you were a rebel because you went against, you went against money or, or the insurance of earning money to pursue your dream, uh, all, also against your, your, your parents' word, you know, b because art is really hard to, to break through and make money. How did you feel about making that decision and going your way, your own way? That's, that's a really interesting question. And I think that, um, I think for a lot of artists, um, you know, you first have to feed your soul first and you have to make art uh, that makes you happy. And so that was the consistent message from uh, my family and my parents when, when I was growing up that, you know, they, they, they might have their own opinions, but in the end, they just want me to be happy. And so I think I, I got through to them that uh, art makes me happy, and and that's why I wanted to do it. And then the rest, uh, I I was an optimist, and that I, I feel like something will fall into place after I get my art degree. Then something will happen, and the money aspect will come later on. And I didn't care too much about that part uh, at the time. Beautifully answered. Thank you so much for for that. Um, what a message, you know. So many people get lost in choosing to follow their path or security or so we call it security but it looks like you got both thanks for sharing that um lastly i'd like to to hear about the um technical aspects of it what what material did you use in the piece yes uh this was done on procreate which is a uh, an application that uh you can uh, get on the ipad um and you know, it's such an amazing program because um, you can paint, you can draw, you can uh, edit images and things like that. And you can do a lot of uh, tricks. Uh, um, but for me, I, I think being technically challenged, I, I use it in the traditional form. So with this, I just use the pencil uh, tool and, and this, <laughs> uh, 
the the feature that I loved about um, Procreate is I can zoom in, and so it fed more into my obsessive composiveness. And so I zoomed in and I worked on the snout and I worked on like each fur and and I just love that. And so um, I wanted to work on Procreate because um, it's, it's portable. I can bring it anywhere. And and with the Apple Pencil, I mean, technology has helped uh, my artwork in a lot of ways. Uh, I don't have to prepare oil paints or um, clean up. Uh, generally, like traditionally, for something like this, I would have a rag to a blend and then my hands would be dirty and then I would have blister from blending with my fingers. But now, you know, um, Procreate just helps uh, keep things a little neater and, and makes things a little easier for me. Beautiful. You know, I, I'm totally blown away because I thought this was traditional media. I did not have a clue that, that it was digital. Amazing yeah. work. Thanks so much, Nock. Really appreciate that. So we'll bounce back to you again for the final question. But for now, we're going to jump to Julia and take a look at her work. Thanks, Nock. Amazing work. And for those who are just joining us or jo joining us at this point, welcome. We are now looking at Julia's work and um, hearing what inspired the piece. Julia, take it away. Um, yes, uh, this piece is called The Changing Light. And um, it's a visual interpretation of Lawrence Ferlinghetti's poem, The Changing Light. And I, I, what inspired me was because he had passed away um, in February. Um, and, you know, it was kind of, kind of the height, the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so it just made me think about my, you know, growing up in San Francisco and the kindness that he showed me uh, when I was a kid. Um, and I just wanted to do something uh, to, something special, you know, to honor him and to honor his work uh, in some way. Um, the piece is, uh, I start off uh, with mark making, with pens and pencils and inks. Um, and I just kind of let things kind of happen organically. Um, I knew that I wanted to do a city cityscape, a skyline, um, but I also wanted to interpret interpret the, the poem and um, what he talks about with the fog rolling in and the lighting and, um, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, just basically uh, just to honor him, you know, uh, a lot of, um, how do I say it? Um, uh, a lot of the the movements that I that I make is a circular movement. Um, I do a lot of E's and I do a lot of O's, and for me, I mean, it helps me loosen up for one, um, and then also it it serves to me as a form of meditation because each stroke is a breath that I take and the breath that I'm taking is, is centering myself and being present for that, for that split second. Um, so I tend to do that a lot in my work. Um, and also I have a lot of, uh, like the technical aspect, um, you know, I wanted to add in like the tangent lines, you know, where they meet each other, um, kind of uh, architectural lines to kind of show you, you know, the, the shape of the building. Um, so it's abstract, but it's also technical. Um, and I think that comes from my, uh, my design background, you know, in addition to uh, 
being interested in fine arts and being interested in abstract art, um, I feel like uh, I'm happiest most when I'm working intuitively. Um, I'm just letting my, my body and my breath kind of dictate uh, the outcome. Mm. You know, it's kind of a reaction to the strokes that I make. Um, you know, sometimes it's like, oh, I don't like that, you know, so I'll, I'll go over it. Mm. Sometimes I'll find something that is like, that I love a lot, that's like a treasure to me, but it doesn't quite work. So I have to kind of let that go um, and trust that somehow it'll, it'll return in a, in a better way. And that's kind of proved right to me. Um, I've been happier <laughs> with, with this approach and um, which probably would lead me into uh, how that came about, you know, during the pandemic and um, yeah. Wow. Oh, okay. Thanks for explaining that. You stole my question because I was going to ask about the duality in the piece. You know, there's the structure, the structural aspect of it, and the the concrete and the abstract coming mm -hmm. together in, into this one world. And then you also spoke of meditation and um, being spontaneous, being in the moment. That's really interesting. Um, there is a question in the chat. If you could um, give us the name of your inspiration, the poet. If you could just type that in the chat for us. Okay. So, so while you do that, I would also like to know what what is the landscape? What does it mean to you? I know this this looks like the Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah. But could you talk about bridges? Uh, well, the Golden Gate Bridge. You know, I mean, it's very iconic for San Francisco. Um, but what's interesting is that the vantage point is really from the East Bay looking toward the city. So the bridge would be the Bay Bridge. Um, but, you know, I think that when people think of San Francisco, they automatically think of the Golden Gate Bridge and that the orange bridge um, is like immediately you, you identify it as San Francisco. Um, but the vantage point really is I am here in the East Bay and I'm looking toward the city um, and reflecting on um, my childhood there, you know, growing up there um, and reflecting on uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti and, um, you know, his poem. Beautiful, beautiful. I, I, I really would love to, to hear more about uh, that connection. What's the bridge connecting, you know, or who's on the bridge? But um, those, I guess, are questions for, for a later moment. Thanks for that deep dive. It's, it's such a, a diverse uh, range of approaches that, that, that you guys have, you, you know, and it's interesting to see your, your take on art and your interpretation of it. Thanks so much for that. Now we bounce back to to knock the, the quarantine. How did it impact you and your work? The, you know, um, the quarantine has um, helped me have more time to do my work because um, as, as a hairdresser and people in the service industry, a lot of us during the pandemic were out of work for a while. And so that was such a great time for me to just go back to the basics of, you know, this is what helped me cope and deal with when I was younger. And so this is a hard time for me right now. And art just brought me a lot of happiness. So, so I just started drawing, I started painting again and just having a lot of, um, more time just to kind of calm that anxiety of the pandemic. Um, and so I used it as therapy and I was able to do a lot more work. I started doing portraits for my friends and I did portraits for some of my clients and, and you know, that brought in a little income for me. And so, yeah, it, it brought me back to the basics, Victor. 
of uh, of art making me happy. Wow. Wow. So, so um, if I were to ask you, how do I find that space? You know, where I can be happy and lose a track of time and find find that how 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 can you explain that? That's a very interesting question. I think um, that's uh, it's it's different for everyone. Uh, for me, what works for me is I I have to distinguish between the noise that is um, that is in our culture. There's there's a lot of um, negative messaging when it comes to arts and liberal arts and and things that are seen as hobbies. Um, and 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 you, and and you just have to separate that and and sit with yourself and be honest with yourself. If if something makes you happy, like why would you shy away from it and not let it into your life? Um, and and for me, like to be honest, like I, I have let um, my personal professional life, my professional life, distract me from art and negative self talk that I'm not good enough and I, I need to be better. And so that's why the, the time from college until just a few years ago, I didn't do a lot of art because I didn't feel like I was good enough. I didn't have um, a voice as an artist. I didn't have anything interesting to say, but really the, the pandemic and the last few years I, I realized that, you know, it makes me happy. And so that's why I want to do it. And so I, I would suggest people really, you know, give themselves time to, to, to dissect and to find out what that is for, for them. Beautifully answered. I think uh, uh, Socrates said, um, the life not, the unexamined life is not worth living. Beautifully summed up. So I guess the answer would be take time to examine what makes you happy and then pursue that and yes. avoid the noise. Beautiful message. I think I will let my daughters listen to this for, for a bit. All right, thanks so much. Is there anything else you'd like to add about the pandemic question? You know, I, I think uh, for me, the pandemic is just a start um, in my career in art because um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to find my voice as an artist and I'm trying to um, reintroduce myself to this community. And that's why this art is so important to me. And I'm so excited to be here and to talk to, uh, about my art and to listen to other artists and to be involved and be included in this book because um, it's, it's, it's such a fascinating community and um, and I'm glad that the pandemic has kind of brought me back. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that. We do have questions for you in the chat. We'll get to those shortly after we hear about um, uh, Julia's journey through the, the pandemic. So um, Julia, on to you. The pandemic, how did it impact you and your artwork? Oh, well, I guess I would say that it, in some ways it's been a curse and uh, in more ways it's been a blessing. Um, the be you know, at the beginning of this pandemic, I was just super paranoid. Um, you know, I would have groceries delivered and then I would just like wash all the packaging. I would wash all the vegetables. I spent a lot of time scrubbing and cleaning and just being afraid. Um, you know, I didn't know very many people in the beginning that had passed away from the virus, but later on, you know, I started to learn of family, you know, uh, friends of family um, passing away from the, the pandemic. So it, you know, it, it just, it made me really hyper-focused on, um, just how fragile life is and uh, the impermanence of just all of us being here, you know, um, and just getting used to change. Um, 
And I think what, what really helped me through it is uh, taking all the anxiety and all my worries and focusing in, you know, with my paintings. Um, I created a, a group um, that we could get together, you know, on Zoom and talk about our art, you know, talk about, you know, our worries or things like that. So, you know, in that way, I feel like my, my art was kind of, was a lifesaver for me. You know, it, it, it helped ground me in a way that I think I wouldn't have found that if I didn't have that, um, you know, to work through like all of this stuff. Um, I, I, you know, I lost some really close friends, not from, from the pandemic itself, not from the virus itself, but because of the virus and not being able to connect physically with these people, um, I feel, I mean, it just felt like even more of a loss uh, because in my community, nobody really, nobody really were connecting that strongly where we could, you know, take care of our friend who, who wasn't doing well. Um, you know, it was almost like the community fractured a little bit because of, of the pandemic. Um, so that was a really hard, uh, a hard part and I'm still reeling from that and the community that I'm in we're still reeling um, just like you know not really understanding how uh, a person the person that in our community so vibrant um, and who really didn't show and even to the, the, the end didn't show uh, their vulnerability you know um, so I think taking the experience and just kind of like trying to dig a little deeper about what life means to me, um, you know, and it brings me back to the circle that I draw and how that it represents community. Um, and I think that's probably my obsession with wanting to create this circle. Um, in my art, but uh, it's it's just been a helpful helpful therapy for me, and um, so we'll see. You know, I, I think this is going to be around for a bit, and um, you know, I'm vaccinated. My friends are vaccinated. You know, so we're starting to to meet and do things, um, but I'm still cautious and. Um, but op optimistic, you know, that, that things will get better and that, you know, yeah. Well, thank you both for sharing those very intimate um, experiences during the pandemic. And I think it's, it's vitally important that we hear artists' voices because artists are the observers of society. They're the commentators. And um, to hear you speak of art being such a powerful tool, both of you, during such a hard time, really answers the question for, for a lot of people who got tired of the, the screen, who got tired of the entertainment, who got tired of life itself. So what do you do when you get tired of life, when you have so much loss? And art seems to be the space to go into whatever that may mean to people. So I would like to thank you both for sharing those very intimate moments and um, dropping those gems. You know, you never know who you might save by through your words because somebody else was washing pa packages constantly because they were so afraid. Somebody else was having a hard time because they couldn't go to work, like not, not um, uh, shared. So artists are human beings who have found a way to get rid of the noise. Thank you both. Um, I would like to now open it up for questions, but before I do, there are some questions in the chat. Uh, one is for Nock. Um, how long have you used Procreate? And 
Yeah, take it away now. Yeah, uh, before I answer that, I, I just wanted to make a comment that uh, listening to Julia talk, um, you know, it's, it's so funny that she, she has experience as a hairdresser and that I'm a hairdresser, but then there are other parallels uh, to us as artists. And it's so funny that both of us are here because she has also mentioned that art is therapy for her. And, you know, I talk about how uh, this has been very therapeutic for me during the pandemic because it grounded me and it kept my anxiety at bay. And then, you know, uh, I think Julia, you also mentioned um, uh, something that you, oh, just, just being obsessive with, with drawing circles. And like, I, I, I love using the word uh, being obsessed with my art as well. And so, uh, and, and then even when you were talking about how you had a very humble beginning of finding, uh, just found objects in your art because you grew up uh, uh, just uh, not having a lot of money. And, and that was kind of my experience being a, a immigrant too. And so it's, it's so interesting how we're both here and there are so many parallels as, as us artists that, that I'm, I'm just drawing right now. Uh, to answer the question, uh, I've been using Procreate for about two years off and on now. Uh, I, I only like using it for drawing actually. Um, when it comes to painting, uh, which I do most of the time, uh, I, I, I like the traditional medium. I like to set up, I, even though I complain about it, I like to set up my, my paint thinner. Um, I like my, my oils and I like to get messy. And, and I just love the tactile nature of paint and the smell of paint and uh, just being in my zone. Whereas like when, when I use Procreate, it's just a quick uh, tool that I can take on with me when I travel or, uh, or when, when I draw. That's, that's really what I use uh, Procreate for. Awesome, thank you so much. And thank you for drawing those parallels between you and Julia. It just made me think um, artists create stuff out of nothing, you know, out of the emptiness of, the seeming emptiness comes the magic of images and thoughts and ideas put down on paper, beautifully put. Thank you so much. And one last question for you now. Um, there's a question in the chat. Is that your painting behind you? No, <laughs> this is uh, one of my uh, good friend. It's uh, my friend, um, Mark Pellier. Uh, he is an artist in New York City. And this was um, a, a beautiful piece that uh, he has sent uh, us as a gift and his partner framed it nicely for us. And over here are some more of his artwork. And um, we, we just have a lot of his work in our space. Um, he's an amazing artist. Beautiful, thank you. All right, and um, at this point, I would just like to um, get the audience ready for their questions. And while they do that, I would like, also like to remind people that the 2021 East Bay Artists 2021 book is now available on fridayartwork.com. Let me just check my notes for that, correct. So if you look for eastbayartbook.com, eastbayartbook.com, you will find copies of the 2021 book. And I recommend you get as many copies as you can because the last time they did really sell pretty quickly. Um, secondly, there is an uh, check out, art, check out artist meet, meet, meetups at meetup.com forward slash Alameda dash artists. That's pretty long. So I think if you search for Alameda Artists on Meetup, you'll come across the group, which uh, Sarah can talk more about that. All right, you can catch this show and past shows um, on uh, and learn more about the panelists, that is read their bios, um, see, see their work on at fridayartwork.com. That's a lot of information. And I'll leave, I'll leave the last um, um, notices after the questions. So we, we just want to go to the to the audience and see if there are any questions. Does anybody have questions? Not yet. Okay, think about it. I'll, I'll run through the, the announcements and then we'll go through with this. Artists also feel free to 
to announce anything happening in your community, any events um, going on, or if you have an ex exhibition and so on. Panelists, um, time to make any art related announcements. This will be the time. Um, any, uh, any, anyone's opportunity to make art or art related opportunities in the audience also, we, we will work, welcome that. Join us for the second Friday for November's art talk to be to be announced, which is this one. So that's supposed to be December's art talk. So join us again in December. Guests will be announced. In the meantime, do dig through the archives. As, you, as you've seen today, we, we talked about impermanence. We talked about surviving. We talked about finding your joy. And um, just the beauty of having something of your own. These amazing insights, gems as they are, are something that can carry people through hard times. So do dig through the archives and just see what the other artists also shared. And with that being said, we're going to sign off shortly. But before we do, we want to open up um, the stage for any questions or announcements. Artists, do you have any announcements? Uh, yes, I uh, belong to a collective called Oakland Art Makers, and we're going to have a holiday pop up uh, November 27th, 28th uh, at 6501 San Pablo Avenue in Oakland uh, from 10 to 5. And there's going to be several artists and yeah, come, come shop, get your holiday gifts. Would you mind typing the dates and, and yes. lo dates, location and time just in the chat? Because I'd be very interested in checking that out. Okay. It's already in the chat. She was oh, is it already? <laughs> oh, perfect. <Yeah. laughs> 12, Thank 12, you so much. Two. Uh, All right. Um, so that's I have a, a holiday pop-up. Uh -huh. Yeah. Go, go ahead, Sarah. Um, just tomorrow, we're doing our um, every month art in the park at Chichenya Park here off of uh, San Jose and um, Park Avenue in Alameda. So just look for me and Dave and whoever else shows up and we're going to just, it's a very informal get together to, to work on art in nature. So we'd love to see new faces, show up, bring snacks or don't. Bring if you, don't <laughs> you can bring an iPad, not, you can bring traditional. We've had, pe we've had people do plain air, um, sketching, I iPad art. So it's, it's just a really fun way to get to be around other creatives and in nature, in outside, and let your juices flow and rejuvenate. So, oh, and sorry, it's from tomorrow at two thirty. So two thirty until usually we do like an hour. Sometimes it goes longer; it can go for two hours. We kind of it's very informal. However long people want to stay. Awesome, thank you so much. And uh, if you want to find that, that's also in the chat. Chat. Oh, that's a different one. Um. I am That's not sure how. To, <laughs> um, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but I'll say thank you for putting that in the chat. And it reads: Alameda Women Artists Pop Up at um, South Shore, down from Starbucks. That's Friday to Saturday, 11 a.m. to 4 p.m. Closing reception will be on November 28, uh, 12 to 2. So I'm not sure what what the start date is. Could the poster please inform? Well, would you like me to unmute you so you can talk about it? Yes, okay. You shall be unmute, muted. <laughs> so I asked you, if you should get a notification to unmute. Yes. There, yeah, there we go. Uh, yes, uh, it started on November 5th and the opening was November 6th, but now it's continuing on Fridays through Sunday through the end of the month and we'll have a closing reception. There is a, um, a silent auction that supports a, an art award for a local artist each year, if we have the money from the silent auction. So come on by. Uh, there's probably about 40 people and then may put in a silent auction. Okay. And I you think turn. there are eight artists. Sorry, you turned into ro robot mod mode. Um, like oh, I'm sorry. Want me to type seconds. it? Want me to just to put it in chat? Sure. 
Okay. That'll be permanent. Thank, thanks so much for that, Miriam. Appreciate that. Sure. All right. So there's a lot happening. Um, and I would advise, um, I would encourage people to connect uh, before we leave so that we stay in touch. That way we build the community and just keep it vibrant. So please do. All right. Do we have any other announcements? Um, not, first of all, knock, do you have any announcements to make? Uh, no, no, I don't. Well, I just wanted to talk real quick. I had a few things to say. Um, first of all, knock, I wanted to find out, um, what made you, what made you approach procreate or how did you get, how did, what inspired you to start using procreate? Uh, I think it was just out of laziness from uh, carrying all my tools. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I was traveling a lot. And uh, so just having a pencil and a pad, uh, just yeah, the iPad just works out a lot easier. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm embracing technology more. <laughs> I have to say I was very, I've used Procreate too. I know we talked about it a little bit earlier, but I use Procreate and I, I like you, I've only been using it for a couple of years. I started in uh, just at real, really at the beginning of 2020, because I got the iPad as a gift for Christmas 2019. Um, and I mean, my learning curve has really progressed. I would say using that I've been practicing portraits on it. Um, I was hesitant though, I have to say, I was hesitant to use it because I'm so used to traditional art mediums, um, but seeing Dave use it and seeing what he could do with it, it did pique my curiosity. And so then when I started with it, I'm, and again, like also like you, I am hyper detailed and hyper focused and I love being able to zoom in to even the pixel <laughs> level and see what I'm doing, make the tiniest little pixel change makes us a big difference. Yes. I, so I like that. I loved being able to zoom into your piece yeah. and see the details there. And, and that's what I was saying, right, Sarah, that if it makes you happy, then, hey, it, it has done its job, right? Because mm -hmm. art is supposed to make you happy first. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, and that's a good transition over to Julia, because Julia, your piece I loved it from the start, but hearing that it's based on a poem, because actually I used to write poetry before I started um, doing physical art. And I love poetry. Yeah. And no. seeing it, I can I can feel where, where the poem, I haven't read that poem, I'm going to now though. Mm -hmm. And seeing your piece makes me realize, I, I can almost feel what the poem is gonna be like, you know? So I, I'm excited to be able to read read it and then and reflect on your piece and see that. I loved all the movement and colors in, in it. It was just, it's very inspiring and beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Beautiful. Um, beautiful. It is 8.19 and we've got 11 minutes to go before we round this off, but um, that doesn't mean we can't keep discussing. I just love the the aspect of that emotion being um, conveyed in two totally different mediums. And uh, it just shows, for me, it just shows the power of the artist and their conviction to be able to create beauty and emotion with something so, so abstract, you know, as a concept in your mind, and then you bring it out. Now it's a gift to the world. Once again, you can find their pieces in the East Bay 2021 art book available on East, oh, let me get it right, eastbayartbook.com. I'm going to shop for mine straight after this because I don't want to miss it. Great Christmas gift, by the way. So having plugged that in, let's get back to the discussion. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing I'm interested in is um, how do you both feel about the way artists are regarded in, in this society and what has, has the value of artists changed in any shape or form, um, given that artists were the most vibrant people during the pandemic and they lit up cities, they lit up digital screens with their images and so on. So how do you feel about um, the reception of art, artists now? Any of you can take it. Yeah, I, I would like to answer that first. Um, 
you know, I, I think continuing my, uh, my theme of uh, technology, actually, uh, I think social media has changed art in, in such a um, interesting way because like now, now artists is, um, are, are able to show their work um, a lot more and, 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 and I feel like, um, I mean, social media is a, a, a monster in, in itself, but I, I feel like um, social media has, has allowed artists to, to, to show their work and, and, and expose them, uh, these artists a lot more. Mm -hmm. Um, awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Great. And since people were so much online during the pandemic, I think, yeah. you know, th that period really exploded in terms of artist exposure. Yeah. Uh, Julia, you're, you're going yeah. to say something. Well, I, I mean, I, I found that um, I have an Instagram uh, page and I found that during the pandemic, that I'm getting a lot of uh, like new people um, that are following my page. And I think because people are on social media so much more um, and unable to go out uh, to the museums and you know go to music venues and I mean, all the things that I used to love to do, um, I see them. You know, I see them on social media, um, and then I also am looking at other artists through social media, and you know, it's just really wonderful what I'm seeing out there. It's very beautiful, um, you know. And we're all kind of befriending each other. You know, we're commenting on each other's work, and you know, uh, just acknowledging one another. So it's another. Uh, another way of creating community and also another way of um, making that connection, you know? Um, because I mean, people react differently uh, to art depending on their life experience or depending on what they're going through, you know? So I'm hoping that my art uh, will speak to those people and you know, I don't know, just kind of, I want to put out this sense of, you know, we're family, you know, we're a community. Um, we're all going through this together um, and we're all going to get through it, you know? So, I mean, in a sense, uh, that's the, the blessing that I see in, uh, yeah. yes, social media, Lovely. pandemic. <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, I, Victor, I wanted to add to my comment that, um, you know, I, I think social media really helped to expose all these artists and uh, other art forms. But um, uh, I think for me, sometimes uh, it can be overwhelming sometimes because there are so many, uh, I, I think of the algorithm of social media, it just keeps pushing all these um, art and artists and uh, and eventually I feel a little um, overwhelmed by, by so many art out there and so many artists. And, and, and I think the conversation that people are having right now is like, uh, I think people, uh, well, I will speak for myself that I, I that, that negative self-talk keeps coming in for me that, oh, my work isn't as good as this person. And, and then it becomes a compare and contrasting that that I find that um, that's not uh, uh, productive for me to have. And so I, I think that was my comment about like social media being the monster and the demon that it can be, uh, even though it, it can uh, expose and um, expose artists and, and connect artists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, Nock. Um, well, what I'm getting from this, correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, social media tends to reduce art to only the image. And that's what people 
to zone in on and focus on and therefore leads to a comparison you know is it does it look like that one is it better than this one which is why i think these discussions are so important because you get to see the artist behind the work you know you can relate the the work with a human being and that's incomparable you, you, there's no other knock there's no other julia you know the, you you guys are individuals so with that being said i would like to thank you so much for your time and sharing so intimately about your work and your insights and knock i would have loved to dive deeper into how you circumnavigate ne negative self-talk because we've all been there i visit that place every morning and yeah <laughs> it's a tough place to be so it's so good to hear you talk about it and the awareness that this doesn't work for you and this works for you and on to you julia i mean what's amazing for me about this talk is that you both stepped outside yourselves and viewed what you were doing you were washing these vegetables and packaging and you, you were obsessive compulsive but now, who was that person seeing that who's that observer same with knock who was that person who was seeing what makes you happy you know so it's a beautiful thought to to, to end on that self-examination is super important and to realize that we're part of a larger community yes. our identity is not just with our in our bodies it's the universe with that being said this is victor and i've been your host tonight thank you so much to knock thank you so much to julia for sharing so intimately thank you, you can reach these artists um through uh fridayartwork.com do not hesitate to reach out and connect with these amazing people because I believe they got more gems for you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Self-recording. <laughs>